Okay, we will discuss about the topic of analog communication in the presence of noise. Time has come to discuss with this matter because uh, we have studied different types of analog communication techniques DSBSC, SSBSC, amplitude modulation with period, phase modulation, frequency modulation and we are waiting for random variable and random process to complete because noise uh, in fact is uh, random in nature therefore we have studied a lot regarding random variable and random process once we have captured that uh, we have no hesitation to discuss with the uh, analog communication in the presence of noise or how it performs when it is attacked by the noise obviously no noise is uh, some undesirable uh, signal or interference that enters into the uh, system communication system and deteriorates the uh, quality of the signal and the received signal may be deviated from the message signal before we uh, go on discussion we uh, will so before we start about a particular type of modulation we will uh, consider here in our uh, discussion a bandpass white Gaussian random process and like the uh, bandpass random process here also this bandpass white Gaussian random process its power spectral density can be represented by this and using the quadratic form nt can be written as nc cos omega ct and n is sin omega ct the power spectral density of ohm is like that and uh, this form this form of uh, representation quadratic form we can have another representation that we can use for representing bandpass signals or bandpass noise that is nt equals to e of t cos omega ct plus theta okay where et is a root of summation of square nc square and n square and theta t is minus 10 inverse ns by nc okay now uh, we will directly enter uh, into the calculation of baseband system noise okay so what is baseband communication uh, at the beginning we uh, talked about two types of communication one is baseband communication and another is modulated communication uh, in the baseband communication message signal is directly sent through the channel and uh, in that case uh, we will calculate the signal to noise ratio at the receiver and that will be used as our benchmark signal to noise ratio and the other uh, signal to noise ratio in the uh, other types of modulation will be compared in respect of that here another notion that we will consider that though the message signal power um, uh, or the transmitted power from the transmitter is denoted by ST and it is going through the channel noise is uh, added in the channel this is the receiver whose input is denoted by SI and NI signal and noise respectively and output signal and noise has be, uh, have been denoted by is not l not okay actually um, this ratio is not by l not that is snr in the output and actual input to the system if we consider <coughs> is from here that is st that uh, have transmitted that signal but for the ease of discussion we will throughout this communication noise calculation we will consider that the signal and noise input will be considered as the input of the receiver at the receiving end and it will be denoted by SI by NI we have done a small calculation uh, for the output SNR and we have seen that uh, this output SNR for this band communication where no modulation uh, has been used there the ratio of signal to noise ratio is SI divided by NB okay this uh, is denoted by gamma and this gamma will be used as a benchmark fu function for comparison in different other types of modulated signal okay 
now in today's class we will discuss about the effect of noise in a am modulated signal different variations of am at first we will consider dsbsc here is the message signal we have used root 2 cos omega ct at the transmitting end and sent to the channel channel has um, some input has added at the channel then it is a band pass filter and transmitted from uh, this is the uh, output yit and denoted by si into ni this yit again multiplied with root cos omega ct and finally passed through a baseband filter that means you have studied baseband filter means low pass filter to get the output is not in not now uh, here this is yit yit is nothing but the uh, root 2 mt cos omega ct plus the noise what we have done the same thing we have done for uh, all the cases that this nt noise signal we are passing it through a bandpass filter that means whatever may be the nature of the uh, or whatever may be the spread of the noise signal this will restrict it by the bandpass filter and power spectrum will be within this 4 pi b and using the quadratic form of the noise we have calculated it has been easily you can easily calculate it and you will see the power of the nc part or power of the ns part both are same and the final output of the noise has been calculated to be nc square and uh, signal noise is si after all the output signal to noise ratio we have got si by nb that is gamma and this is identical to baseband communication sorry one minute and uh, finally we have calculated the output SNR is um, SI by NB that is gamma and identical to baseband communication ok so here most important part I am showing you the rest part you can easily understand that is whenever you will con uh, calculate the output noise here it is 45B here it is 45B here it is eta by 2 when uh, these two signals are coming to uh, centered at 0 the height becomes n by 2 plus n by 2 so capital n now you calculate the power under this area uh, calculate the area under this uh, rectangle you will get the power output power ok and whatever what the output SNR we have calculated is very much similar to the um, baseband uh, communication that means the DSBSC modulation has somehow been able to uh, handle the noise because we have done the modulation using DSBSC but the signal to noise ratio is same as that of baseband communication similar calculation has been done for SSBSC I am telling just the only difference here as it is SSBSC uh, the spread is the spread of the noise uh, uh, in the power spectral density is 2 pi b here also 2 pi b i think mistakenly it has been written as 4 uh, pi b you correct it by 2 pi b and you can easily see when these two signals are coming to form either the power spectral of snc or sn s omega whatever may be this part and this part coming together and this was 2 pi b 2 pi b so this will be 4 pi b and this is one half and this is coming from D sharp therefore the height remains same eta by 2 eta by 2 and the power has been calculated fortunately here also signal to noise ratio still at gamma that is as that of DSBSC modulated or baseband that means signal to noise ratio has not been modified such in uh, SSBSC now we will discuss the effect of noise in the amplitude modulated signal when we are considering with carrier communication. There are two ways uh, we will consider when the AM signal has been demodulated by coherent detection or synchronous detection and when the AM signal has been detected by envelope detector. Okay, at first we will consider about the method of coherent detection. 
So I'm not going to the calculation because calculation has explicitly been written in my notes. Okay, you see the calculation. What the difference I am showing that uh, the output is in, uh, the input signal power you have calculated this much and you get it from yit is not is m square t and uh, here you see one tricky area is square plus m square p sometimes come in si calculation 2a into mt message signal and you are taking the mean okay mean of the message mean of say sine or cosine signal over a time period what it is it is zero therefore not the m square t is zero mt is zero so this part will vanish and signal input is a square plus m square t mean in the similar way output noise has been calculated output noise is similar and uh, output snr what we have obtained is an interesting expression that is one uh, m square t bar bar means average or mean divided by a square plus m square t now you see signal to noise ratio will be maximum out we want to uh, maximize signal to noise ratio it will be maximum when capital a will be minimum and what is the maximum value of mt mt is mp therefore a will be always greater than equals to mp therefore to get maximum snr a should be minimum so we will consider a equal to mp when a is substituted by mp then we see that we are getting this expression and mp square divided by the mean value of message obviously it will be always greater than equals to 1 therefore output snr will be always less than gamma by 2 here a significant difference from the dsbsc ssbsc we found that is the signal to noise ratio was uh, gamma for dsbsc or ssbsc here it is less than equals to gamma by 2 and this gamma by 2 this uh, gives rise to 3 db deterioration of uh, signal to noise ratio 3 db in that sense if you represent this in log scale that is signal to noise ratio in log uh, db equals to 10 log 10 gamma minus 10 log 10 2 that is minus 3 db therefore we can conclude that snr in aim is at least 3 db or because this is less than equals to at least 3 db or worse than dsbsc and ssbsc and this follows from this calculation now what will happen if the aim is demodulated by envelope detector okay uh, here uh, through the calculation a similar type of calculation is going and uh, for small noise we have calculated for if the noise is small then this is very much uh, similar to the uh, am demodulated by the coherent detection but if the noise is large a very interesting thing that happens here that the this is this is the envelope envelope we are naturally calculating the envelope detector ai t envelope becomes e n t e n t is the square root of n c square plus n square t that means it is the envelope of the noise alone and a plus m t multiplied with cos theta n t we need the message signal m t but unfortunately it has been multiplied by cos theta n t theta n t is the angle coming from the noise that means signal and noise has been multiplied therefore it is truly difficult to get back the message signal from this uh, case when it is envelope detected and the noise is large now we will consider a special case uh, aim when demodulated by synchronous detection we have seen that uh, the what is the signal to noise ratio signal to noise ratio is m square t divided by mt square plus m square t multiplied by gamma if we consider this m square t divided by m square mp square plus as a con uh, t square uh, uh, m square t as a constant then it represents a straight line therefore if i represent x axis on gamma and y axis as output snr then it is a straight line so no problem uh, if you uh, increase the input uh, you have the uh, you have in your hand the signal noise 
input. Okay, so if you can increase the gamma, your output tensioner will be gamma uh, will be higher. Therefore, there will be no problem. But suddenly it has found. Um, sorry, it is found that suddenly beyond a certain value of gamma, the output tensioner does not follow the straight line. It deteriorates drastically, for uh, leaving the straight line. That is the problem, and this is called threshold effect. Beyond the uh, beyond the threshold uh, value, we see that output tensioner reduces drastically with the small reduction in the input tensioner. Therefore, when, uh, whenever we are designing a system with the synchronous detection, we must assure that your gamma, that means your input signal by N B should be at some higher value of this gamma threshold otherwise output tensioner will be very low and uh, we have shown also calculation it is i think not in your syllabus but out of interest i have shown if you wish you can see what is that uh, value of threshold beyond which you will uh, your performance of the output tensioner will deteriorate drastically and here you, uh, we have done an assumption that whenever uh, if NC and NS, these two quadratic part of the noise are Gaussian in nature, uh, the square of the Gaussian and square root of it, uh, summation and then square root will give you a Rayleigh uh, density function given like that. And after doing some calculation, I have I am showing uh, an interesting part of calculation how it has come. Okay. One thing you must uh, consider that is, uh, say you are uh, communicating for 10, say, uh, 10 minutes, you are considering, and uh, for uh, one microsecond noise is um, high. Will you consider that, or it matters uh, much if it the noise is at large, is large for a uh, time interval that is. Uh, noticeable or that is implicable or that causes some threat to the signal that means what will be that value that means what should be the duration uh, for which the noise should stay at that large level is can be represented as the probability probability of the signal noise in is greater than 1 for how much if it is if the probability is greater than some certain value then only you will bother about otherwise you will not bother okay this is uh, some uh, assumption we are considering if we consider that en is greater than 1 with the probability 0 0.01 you may consider 0 0.02 0 0.03 whatever maybe if we consider 0 0.01 and we are considering a point A, we are con uh, uh, the assumption is in that way, it is obviously what we told Rayleigh density function. When this area under curve of beyond A is equals to point zero 0.01, then we will get the value of gamma threshold beyond which there will be the threshold effect and we have calculated it as 13.8 uh, uh, and gamma threshold in dB scale is 11.4 dB but consider that we have considered probability 0 0.01 if you take 0 0.02 that will give you another uh, corresponding threshold value thank you